What is up, people? Jean Carlos here with the Total Body Training Podcast, where I help people get lean, gain muscle, and build some damn confidence. And today, I'm with my friend Corey P. Say hey, Corey. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is uh, Corey Pease. I'm a trainer out of the Dallas area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Corey is a GASP sponsored strongman athlete, yep. and he's also the owner of a CBD company. Do you want to tell us the name of your company? Tell us a little bit about that real quick. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually the owner of Holistic Hemp Healing. We are a company that is uh, based out of Maine. All of our product comes out of Maine. Uh, it's just a little, a little great, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, the reason that I'm picking uh, Corey's head today is that we're here at the USPA certification course that we're hosting at Total Body Training, and he contacted me, and we just started. I noticed that, A, this dude is yoked. <laughs> I think it was, what is he doing? <laughs> and uh, we just started talking a little bit, and I realized, holy shit, this guy really knows a lot about uh, training. Uh, obviously, he's got something really special to say, and I didn't really know him before that, but during the day or two that we've been here, I've gotten to know him. Uh, we have a lot in common in terms of like motivation and drive. We just come from different perspectives and have different experiences and knowledge bases. So I think that he has something really special to share with you all. And uh, today we're just gonna kind of get started. We'll talk a little bit about you. So Corey, you're a strongman competitor right now, right? Yep. That's what you do. Where did you start with like working out or I should say like what sports did you play when uh, you were a kid? I come from a heavy baseball, football background. Uh, which later I transitioned more into full-time baseball. Yep. And then when I got out of school, I was like, what do I, I have to do something competitive. Like there has to be something. So I looked into men's softball and then that's where I kind of started doing powerlifting. And that was probably about 12 years ago now that I've been like actually actively lifting and living a healthy lifestyle. So that was 12 years ago. Yeah. You've been doing that. And you said, what did you do with baseball exactly? I played, uh, I was a pitcher and in, uh, in football, I was a running back and then okay. transitioned more into baseball because that's kind of was my passion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed team sports, but uh, to me, baseball as a pitcher is more one on one base. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's kind of like my mentality as a trainer is uh, I, my company is fit for you, but my slogan is you versus you. So I've always like, I've always liked that aspect of, of a baseball pitcher because it's literally everything zoned out. It's you focusing on the catcher. Everything else doesn't matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's also a game of patience. Yeah, you have to agreed. really take your time. And I think people sometimes don't appreciate it because of that. You know, football moves so quickly. Like yeah. So many other sports move so quickly, but it's all about just waiting. <laughs> yeah, my biggest thing is I always see like people will post like, what's the best sport mentality wise? Like what takes the most knowledge? And like, to me, baseball is like a, even a pitcher or any other position doesn't get enough credit because when I go into, would go to a game where I'm pitching, I would have to do like, you'd have to do your research. Like, okay, this guy is weak when the counts one and one, or this guy is going to try to do something when the counts zero and two, or he's going to be super aggressive with a up and in fastball. If you go outside the plate first, mm -hmm. So there's, a, there's so many aspects that kind of get overlooked to me when it comes to baseball. Yeah, it's super popular where I'm from, actually. Yep. Uh, I'm Puerto Rican. So, okay, so yeah. yeah, it's like. So that's super popular. Yeah, yeah, over there. I, I can list everybody that's come from there. <laughs> yeah, everybody. I see you got a Yankees tattoo. You're yeah, a Yankees I'm a, I'm, yeah, living in Maine in yeah. uh, Red Sox Nation with yeah. a Yankees tattoo is a, a little different. Oh, I bet it was. <laughs> I, uh, my favorite baseball pitcher of all yeah. time is Andy, Andy Pettit. Okay. He didn't do anything flashy, he was just super consistent. And uh, I just, I don't know, I just always gravitated to him. I have no idea why. It just, to me, he was just like, he was the definition of a pitcher, just super consistent, uh, didn't have crazy records or anything. He just went in every day and you knew what you were going to get out of him. Yeah, it's badass, man. So when did strength training become your obsession? When did you start loving it? I uh, jumped into powerlifting and I like everybody, I think if you're new to something, I grabbed a coach and she was a little, little crazy fire-headed old, old bodybuilder girl that just showed me uh, like form, correction, everything. Her name was uh, Judy. She was out of uh, Maine where I lived and kind of jumped into there. And after that, it just kind of picked up. I started seeing progression and I just, I just fell in love. It, to me, it went back to like you versus you. And like when I stepped up to the bar, if I was gonna fail, it was on me. It had nothing to do with anybody else. I didn't have to rely on anybody else. It was just what I put into my diet, what I put into my training. Everything I did came down to what I was doing. And what did that do for you? 
like having that kind of responsibility versus like being in a team? Were there things that you learned from those th that are different from each other? Yeah, I guess a lot of, it comes down to the self-discipline because if you have somebody in a team and the team is great, you can have one player that continually be average just by kind of just kind of going with the flow. And when you're in a sport like that, you have to be so self-disciplined because if your program says X, Y, Z, you need to do this. If you're not doing that, it's going to come back at you in two to three weeks or your next meet or something like that. So it's, it, I would say extreme self-discipline that, that taught me. Yeah, and that's what I find that you get whenever you're doing a one-on-one -on -one sport. That's why I've been drawn to like weightlifting sports, yeah. or even things like running. I have a background in running. Like just, you know, getting, you don't get the same kind of thing that you get when you're on a team where everybody gets amped and you get to push each other. Yeah. You also don't have a coach oftentimes. Yeah. When you're, I mean, sometimes you do. You did, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, if you don't have that, it has to come one. I still do. I still have a coach. Oh, yeah? I, yeah. Who coaches you now? Uh, Gabriel Pena. He's actually out of uh, McAllen, Texas. He's pretty uh, – he had a freak injury, but he would 100% have his pro card by now. And uh, he's healthy now and he's probably going to kick some ass this year. But I feel like you honestly, like – in my position where I have so many other things going on in my life, the last thing that I want to do and think about and overthink about is my own programming. I would rather have somebody that's level headed with me and we can just bounce ideas and then let them build it. And then when they send it to me, then I'll be like, Oh, what about this, this, and this? So I think it's important to have a relationship with a coach, especially if you're already an athlete where you guys can kind of feed off each other. Yeah, yeah, that's that's incredible, man. It's so awesome to hear that you've got someone who's motivating yeah. you. And you know, does that does he live here? Or does he live over in Maine or what's he lives in McAllen, in okay. Texas, so okay, like right cool. on the border. Yeah. And uh, I uh, I've I've had I've tried other coach programming, and my, I've had a really good relationship with him because he's more functional strength based, which that's mm. where I I like to be. I mean, I I compete at one ninety eight but I'm probably leaner than most of the guys, mm -hmm. but that's because I factor in, I factor in a lot of that functional strength side. And that's where me and him like really meshed well. Okay. Where we, he wanted me to do, continue to do box jumps, broad jumps, explosive work. And uh, that to me is important. Like I, I, I like to obviously look big and be strong, but I want to be functional. Okay. So, you know, that brings up like this question yeah. that a lot of people bring up in powerlifting and in strongman competition. Yeah. Do you, you know, when you say that you want to be strong, you want to be functional, do you think that you're sacrificing any of your strength training by trying to be functional? Personally, Doing the box jumps and things like that. Personally, I don't think so because if it's programmed and balanced well, there's no reason why you can't have, you can't have like a day that you're just doing explosive work. And I mean, it takes, I mean, if you are training four days a week and you use that fifth day as like your explosive work and then you have two days of recovery or a day and a half. I don't think you're taken away from it at all. Yeah. Okay. So you 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 say that you can have a balance between those. Oh, things. easily, a hundred percent. It just uh, some people just like like that static strength where you can still have it, but I still want to be explosive. Like, yeah. if shit hits the fan, I want to be able to like run through a wall, break a door down, <laughs> and just be quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, man. And like be able to protect yourself. Yeah. Be able to move exactly. around effectively. Like, no, it's it's awesome. And I I would say that that's the best place to be. Yeah. You know, at least for me too. <laughs> so I like to still be able to run a mile. Yeah. You know, it's important. Uh, all right, but uh, I guess my next question is. You had an injury a couple yeah. of years ago. Uh, was that related to? I, I read about it on Instagram. Yeah. Can you share with everyone like what happened and what you were doing when it happened? Yeah, so I was. Uh, I already had. I was already qualified for both federations and nationals. I was getting ready for nationals. And powerlifting or in, in strongman. Strongman. Okay. So I was qualified for NAS and USS, and I kind of just went silent. We, me and my coach Gabe, were just training in the dark social media wasn't really getting much because i was probably at the best peak of i've ever been and uh it just a complete freak injury it literally i was already doing art therapy with a physical therapist i was already doing all this stuff to like pre like prevent injuries and i was in a normal training session all my warm-ups were fine all my all my mid weights were fine got to the top set it was 680 got it up to my knees and one of the collars slipped off so it was just soon you have that much weight shift about four inches, knee buckled in, and then I hit the ground. I was like, I, you had music playing, and my friend that was twenty feet away heard like a, and it just felt it was like somebody shot me in the back. 
My God. And I just hit the ground, and all I remember was like the first thing I did was like call my wife, and I was like, uh, "Yeah, this is bad." And it was just, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just I'd never dealt with an injury before in my life, so it was pretty, it was pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, and so like I find that people who have injuries and yeah. make recoveries have learned a lot about oh, themselves. Yeah, what are some of the biggest things you learned from a traumatic injury like that? I mean, I get, I'm pretty close with some guys that deal with like the Dallas Cowboys, and one of them was like. If you ever do this again, you need to go to see a sports psychiatrist. And I would 100% recommend it. If you can really? afford it, do it. Because, like, they see aspects that you don't see. Like, for me, when I got hurt, I kind of pulled away. And, like, pulled away from training clients because it was almost, like, envious. Like, yeah. they're healthy. I'm not. And it was, like, so much things that – and I'm very level-headed always. So many things, like, kind of flipped. And I actually, like – Looking back on it, I 100% would have went to a, if I ever heard again, I would 100% go to a sports psychiatrist. Because you can wreck your game, man. Like yeah, you're saying, I mean, you're saying that you were you were experiencing some a little bit of jealousy, maybe. Yeah. Like looking at people or anger. And or that's really, and that's not even like me as a person. Like I'm super competitive, but to be like jealous of a person that's 42 because they can squat and they're healthy, like you get like, that's the feeling that I got. And then it was just uh, I got misdiagnosed. I finally found a doctor that was like put me on a good program. And uh, I mean, I feel great now. I'm fully recovered, fully healed, and I'm um, just ready to kick ass again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, man. So when, uh, so this was when you first started competing. Did this occur? Or no, this was like, yeah, this was like uh, almost two years into competing. Okay, so two years into competing. yeah, and five comp. So I did five major competitions. I won four. I was really just focused on not doing any more locals. It was really geared towards. Uh, knocking out nationals and trying to get an invitational to mm -hmm. just other countries that they focus on. Okay, so you know that being said, like in your Instagram post, yeah. you mentioned something about how you kind of like know something about like knowing who your friends are and things like that. Did yeah. you did you feel like your that that changed for you? The people that you spent time with, the people you were closest to, changed during that time. Yeah. Or that you started valuing a different kind of person or maybe were more selective? I would think it, it kind of, you kind of start seeing like that people that you can kind of consider your friend really, they may not be your friend or you may, people don't really know anything about you other than to ask you about your injury, which is like to me is the most annoying thing because it's like, it's a traumatic thing to go through and then the first time you like repeatedly see somebody, how's your back? How's your back? Like it got to the point where I'm like, I'm like, it's literally like you comparing it to my, if my mom died and then people finally like shut up and stop asking me. Cause to me it was like, I'm trying to push through it mentally. I push through it and then it's like, you still get those messages and I don't even fucking read them anymore. I'm just like swipe, delete <laughs> <laughs> Damn. and I'm just like, yeah. don't move on. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't want it also to become your identity. I and mean, yeah, when you exactly. do have an injury, uh, you know, I didn't have an injury lifting, but I had an injury skateboarding. <laughs> so like when I was in high school, I cracked my skull and I got multiple contusions to my brain. Holy and so shit. like after that, yeah, yeah, I was in the hospital. I mean, that's a different kind of injury, yeah. you know, but I just remember being like, I don't want to talk about this anymore, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and still to this day, like sometimes people like when I tell them that, they're like, well, are you mentally okay? <laughs> you know, cause I took a hit to the noggin and I'm like, well, I'm, I own a company. I have a girlfriend. I'm okay. <laughs> you know, as far as I know, I'm okay. Like, am I like, you know, it seem weird, you know, so I can totally understand why that would make you feel that way. Yeah. Because like typically people already see the type of stuff we do. So they automatically assume when we got hurt, it was from that. And for me, I already had everything in place where I, I had no reason to get hurt. It was just the equipment mm. malfunction. The Life happens. Like you can literally open your door, trip, fall and blow out your hamstring. <laughs> like, yep, yep, yep. You know what gets me about that is that nobody's talking about how, cause, cause you're talking about the whole thing where people say, oh, like if you strongman compete or you do powerlifting, you're gonna wreck your life, yeah. you're gonna break your knees. If you squat too low, you're gonna hurt your low back. It's so bad for you, it's so bad for you. Keyboard warriors. Yeah. They see a good squat and they're like, you're gonna hurt your back. Yeah, bad form, <laughs> yeah. like, you know what I mean? And uh, showing off, but it's like, the reality of it is, is nobody's talking about how, you know, our nation has an obesity problem. Yeah. Nobody's pointing at food and saying, that food is like a problem. No, I agree. Or nobody's nobody's saying like, oh, that the TV is is uh, a huge issue and people are trying to boycott that. Like my know? thing was, I was talking to a teacher that I train at a gym in Frisco, and we were kind of going back and forth. And I was like, you, I was like, you know what blows my mind? And this is coming from a, like my CBD company. Is on the nutritional side, we have kids doing health. They're doing health class, but they don't get taught anything nutritional wise. Yeah. 
like I feel like when a kid comes out of high school or college, they should be able to read the label and be like, why does it have all this in it? And that blows my mind. And I deal with it with the CBD side and it's just like, people have no idea what the hell they buy or put in their body. No, they it don't. It blows my fucking mind. Don't even know how to read the label. No, like, not at all. So like, you know, that being said, you brought up your CBD company. Yeah. Where did that kind of come in? Because I know that you mentioned that yeah. that helped you using um, some CBD products helped you when you had your injury. Yeah, because I mean, typically, okay, so you hurt your back, you either go on, like I was on a nerve medication, gabapentin, uh, on, a, on a pretty extreme uh, pow, uh, pain pill that I would split in half because I did not want to go down a road where I would always need these. And then so then comes into sleep because you're taking something that affects your sleep. So the doctor was like, let's do a milligram of Xanax. Let's do two milligrams of Xanax. So I was on that for like five months. And finally, my friend in Maine was like, hey, I'm going to send you some stuff. I want you to try it. I was like, I'm always open. If, if I trust somebody and I know they have real facts or like a real product, I'm always willing to try it. Yeah. And especially and then he sent it to me. Slowly, my two milligrams went down to a one and a half, went down to one, went down to a half, and now it's literally unless like I'm super rat race mind, I don't need it at all. I just do it my like my dropper at night, and then I started researching it, and I was like, wow, I was like, this affects so many things, like with inflammation, with anxiety, uh, digestive. I mean, it, the FDA is looking to approve it solely for seizure patients, and that's just CBD. It affects so many things that people can just add into their life. They don't get the side effects, and I was just real. I was just blown away, and uh, I was just really taken back that how something like that that is so natural, so many people don't know about. And then, uh, like I've started looking into like the other products I see on the market, and they're selling stuff that doesn't. They're labeling it this way, and it goes back into the ingredients that get away with jib jab on this side. Mm -hmm. So, how can someone tell the difference between a product that's good, like yeah. your product, or a product that's just garbage? So, if you're buying anything uh, CBD related, honestly, turn it around. It should be uh, it should be CBD full spectrum. It should be derived from industrial hemp. Uh, if you see anything other than that, it's gonna be. It means it's an isolate. If you see, you're starting to see a lot of hemp seed oil extract, which that is not going to help you at all. That's literally a, it, you might as well take a fish oil. It's great to, great to eat. I put it in my oatmeal, but it ain't going to help me with anxiety and inflammation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's super easy to know. It's just people have to do it. And that's why, like, my approach with my website, I pay doctors a thousand bucks, which is a lot, to do some topics on my website. I don't try to sell it all on my Instagram. I try to do product knowledge. I want people to know there's something great out there and that they can take it. And it does, if you don't like my product, I just want you to know how to read another one. Yeah, and so that's part of the reason why I chose to have you here and to yep. even like share about that because you know I do get as a consumer annoyed when someone's just posting like here buy my t-shirt yeah. like and there's nothing wrong with sharing those things or like showing when you have a sale but I think it's really important as a business owner to help people know like and trust you by offering them uh, information that's helpful Agreed. and things like that uh, and you definitely do that and my biggest thing too is like when I go into it I, I've gone into stores and I could absolutely demolish that brand I'm not going to talk bad about the brand because then it's going to reflect on me if maybe I come up with a product later on that's not as good as someone else. I wouldn't want them to disregard my brand or talk bad about it. So I'm just, I literally just turn their label around and try to teach the person that's in front of me like, hey, this, this, this shouldn't be there. Why is this in here? Yeah. And uh, I just think if you have a, a very like level-headed, steady approach to anything, you're going to see results. You just need to, mm -hmm. you need to have one approach. To me, like you see a lot of companies do this, and to me it's like change of leadership, change of, uh, they're trying to change their demographic. Mm -hmm. They're just, my focus literally is just getting people the select knowledge, or if they message me, hey, I wanna see this, I'd, I'll get a paper on it, I don't care. At the end of the day, like if, if customers reach out to me and they say we want a paper on uh, benefits for pets, I, I bought that last week, it'll be out next week. And it was just, I don't, I could tell them the benefits, but I would rather some, a third party person do it. Yeah. And that's so often what's missing is that people will just say like, I think this about my product. Yeah. Right. But it's not someone else telling you, Hey, this is what's working because of this based on this study and this study and this study. Yeah. Right? I, and, and so, so that's why I respect what Corey's doing here. He goes out of the way to find a third party. That's a big deal. I, I recommend that people do that also with supplements. Anyway. Agreed. 100%. Any, any, 
Like that's why like I get we get our own tested from in house in Maine, mm -hmm. and then we also send it to a third party place in it called Provardi. They're out of Boston. We send it there to get third party tested. Mm -hmm. So our retailers have two different tests. We get retested every three months. I mean, we have everything in place to where it's just continually to do that. Are we gonna lose margin or profit? Yes, but in the end run, I would much rather have a brand recognition and somebody can be like, yeah, they're a really good company. I'd rather have you defend me to somebody that, and you know all the facts. Mm -hmm. that, that's how I look at it. I'd rather not be able to say anything and have my customers defend me. That's that's awesome, man. It's, it's a, a different outlook that I think that the rest of the supplement industry could really learn from. Agreed, So 100%. where does GASP come into all this? Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, this is pretty crazy. Like I've literally had- Is that a GASP shirt? Yeah, this is yeah. a GASP shirt. That's badass. Yeah. So they, they do, uh, so there's GASP and Better Bodies. Better Bodies is more like the classic physique type look. Gasp is more of like the everyday hardcore lifters, the uh, blue collar type stuff. That's more their aspect. And it, it came into play. I mean, I honestly have been buying gas clothing since I lived in Maine. So like when I like moved to, to McKinney and realized that Destination in Plano was a part of Gasp. And then as I was training and coming up in the sport, I got offered that position. And to me, it was just like mind blowing, like to come from a town with 6,000 people to move to DFW area already was like, holy shit, like this is nuts. And then to like have an opportunity to be a part of a company that's so huge that provides me with everything that I need. I mean, it was, it was, it's still mind blowing to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's incredible. And, and who's the owner of Gasp? Uh, Michael Johansson. And they're actually a Swedish, uh, it's a Swedish based company, but their main headquarters for the U S is in Plano. And uh, I mean, they're an extremely large clothing company. I mean, our, they kind of got brought up with like the Branch Warrens, the guys, Sisterinos, like the main, when those guys started in bodybuilding, those, those guys kind of lifted the sport and now they're kind of going more, we have a lot of strongman guys now, which is actually kind of cool because to that, to us and them, it's kind of blue collar-ish, like, I mean, strongman to me seem it's everyday mm -hmm. everyday aspects like mm -hmm. my grip strength i have naturally came comes from doing construction my whole life until i moved here yeah and you you transfer that over the functional strength. yeah so we're getting close to needing to wrap it up yeah. just a, a quick question here where can people find you um so you can find me on instagram it is corey uh, dot p's it's c-o-r-e-y dot p-e-a-s-e and uh, I, my company is all in my bio. You have all the op options you have. If you ever have any questions in regards to fitness, nutrition, hey, Corey, if this product's good, if this bad, shoot me a message. I mean, I take probably three hours a day where I just respond to messages or I try to be involved with everybody and answer. Uh, I don't care about how big your profile is or if you have a product that you think I might want to try. I try and give you feedback. I mean, I try to be, I just try to, I, I did, I, wasn't I never used to have a big following just because I do that doesn't change who I am mm -hmm. and that's how I look at it because I might run into somebody that's small and maybe bigger than me and uh, I there's just, always gonna be yeah I yeah. just always try to stay level-headed and I've said that a couple times and just I have one path I have one focus and just stay that road I think what I get from Corey is he's focused honest sincere and disciplined yeah. And those things, like that package for a person, is something that I think all of us could really learn from and it's something that I'm really inspired by. Before I let you go, is there anything you would say to the beginner who's looking to get into strongman training? And we've only got about one minute. I would say uh, do your research at first. Also always reach out to a coach. I always feel like even the most elite trainers should have a coach. Just somebody, a third person uh, perspective is huge. Do not short yourself. Make sure that you have that foundation built, a coach that respects you and respects your goals. And that's my biggest thing. Just just going in with the right way with a full toolbox. Badass, man. All right. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Sounds Corey. Good, man. Thank you. Uh, you can find me at Total Body Training on Instagram or on the Total Body Training Facebook.com slash Total Body Training dot web, I believe. Uh, until next time, peace.